Good evening and welcome to Match of the Day on the last day of the year for two First Division matches. First, Aston Villa against Queen's Park Rangers, both outsiders in the championship race, but hot contenders for a European place. That's followed by Everton, still struggling to get out of Liverpool's shadow, against Coventry City, the surprise team of the season, with a burning ambition to sample the bright lights. Tonight's news, Liverpool end 1983 as they began it on top of the first division, but Manchester United chased them into 1984, still their main rivals. Chelsea start the new year as second division leaders, despite Kerry Dixon's third penalty miss in four days, and spare a thought for fourth division Hereford, without a win in ten games and one nil up against Colchester when the lights went out on them. Aston Villa and Queen's Park Rangers have shown similar form so far this season. Perhaps that's more satisfying for the newly promoted London club. But where a club's been counts for nothing. It's where it's going that matters. And neither Villa nor Rangers will be satisfied with anything less than a European place this season, giving today's fixture that extra edge. Your commentator, John Motson. Gary Shaw returns after almost four months out of the league side with cartilage trouble and goes into 1984 with his contract here at Villa Park ending in June. Shaw replaces Paul Rideout who drops to substitute after a run of 11 matches and the other Villa change is at right back where Des Bremner comes in for the injured Gary Williams. Rangers field the side which lost at Leicester on Boxing Day. Their two most recent signings, Mike Fillory and Jeremy Charles, are now establishing themselves and there's a return to Villa Park for John Gregory who spent two years with Aston Villa. Referee this afternoon is Alan Banks from Manchester. Aston Villa in their claret and blue playing from left to right and Queen's Park Rangers side by side with Villa in the league table at the start of play are in the hoops. Rangers in fact have played one game less and have also got a better goal difference than Aston Villa. Stewart, Shaw, Mortimer, to Shaw, here's McMahon, and a foul again, Fennick coming in on Shaw, Villa trying to take the quick free kick and earning another one, this is McMahon for Villa, nice ball with, good save by Hucker away by Fennick, still in play, Ormsby back to Mortimer, Offside this time, but they weren't earlier. Peter With was onside when he had the shot, and Hucker made a fine reflex save. And I rather think the linesman feels one somebody spoke out of turn. Warren Neal was the offender, and the referee is called across by the linesman, and he books Neal for dissent. And the warning seemed pretty clear there to Warren Neal, 21-year-old fullback of Queen's Park Rangers. again by Mark Walters and a good fast ball into Shaw was hovering in case Hucker fumbled it completely Rangers finding Neil. Peter Worth appeared to have a kick at Warren Neil there. 
and there have already been signs of bad temper in this match referee having a word with Wyth who certainly appeared to kick out Wicks wide on the left is Dawes but Shaw half intercepting Stainrod's there chance saved by Spink and a good one too and a chance for Simon Stainrod the top scorer inadvertent deflection by Gary Shaw cutting out a pass meant for Dawes caused that Stainrod got in behind the defence but a good reflex save by Nigel Spink Wicks and Ormsby forward onside piece of width good stop by Hucker Again, Charles. Oh, nicely round Evans. And now Jeremy Charles is through. And a great save, too, by Spink. So similar to the one at the other end by Hucker. And maybe we're watching here a future England goalkeeper. But which end, I wonder? They're both very good at coming out in one against ones. But uh, there's a growing regard in the game for the Rangers keeper, Peter Hucker. Stainrod tangling with uh, Evans. Referee called that Evans curvishly. That's well played. DC. So is that. Mortimer. Villa do move well when the play starts to flow. And Mortimer is onside. Brilliantly done this by Villa. And Mortimer couldn't quite get the ball in. Well. If Rangers play the offside game as often as they seem to want to do, teams are sometimes going to find them out with the midfield player making the run at the right time through the ranks. Mortimer's so good at that, it's possibly the strongest part of his game. And on that occasion, the floated effort went the wrong side of the post. Remner. Shaw is the man running, so too is Kirbishly on this side. With with the header, Kirbishly into McMahon and now Mortimer DC coming from left back McMahon and with offside no goals but some nice tidy alert goalkeeping partly responsible for that Nigel Spink getting better it seems with every game and at the other end, Peter Hucker, underrated, but also very sound. 0-0 at half-time. Villa have only lost one home match in the league this season. It was to Arsenal by six goals to two, remarkably. The Rangers have had four away wins. They're playing from the left now, QPR in the second half. This is Peter with. Mark Waters. DC. Waters. And coming in on the far side was Kirbishly. Drove him really wide, the cross. And again, Hucker in no difficulties. Has a very calm temperament to add to his other qualities, which we saw illustrated quite clearly at Wembley in those two cup finals when he was voted the BBC viewers' man of the match. Mortimer. Mortimer. Again, he's there as Hucker. Gary Shaw hoping to bounce on something and Mark Walters certainly supplying the service Tony Barton the Villa manager in the white raincoat in the centre there
sure. Fennick got the ball away as far as DC. Mortimer again with this forward surge. Waters. Oh, he's on his way here. But again, he can't get the shot on the goal. Well, he's a talented young player. Only 19, Mark Waters, but I fancy a spot of shooting practice at the training ground might be in order next week. Came off Ormsby's head, that. Evans was covering behind him and was fouled by Charles. DC. Intercepted by Stewart and Rangers on their way here. Streaming behind him are three players from midfield. Dort has come all the way from left back. Found Stewart again. And Charles is coming in and scores for Rangers. A pass which went wrong for Aston Villa in the middle of the field. And Ian Stewart was away. Dawes joined the attack intelligently, got the ball back again to Stewart. The cross was well angled for the far post, and Jeremy Charles has always been a good target man on those. Put it away nicely by the post. And it's Queen's Park Rangers who take the lead. Slightly against the run of play, perhaps, but Aston Villa have had opportunities and haven't taken them. And they now find themselves up against it at home for the second match running. Here's with into Walters. Villa drew nil-nil here with Spurs on Tuesday, but Tottenham had the better chances. And now it's Rangers who've been galvanised by the goal. Stewart to Fillery. Can Villa strike back quickly? Well, I think if you trace the move a long way back, it was Peter With whose pass meant for McMahon went astray for Aston Villa, and it was the opposite number nine who eventually capitalised. Charles is up again. Stainrod's there. And I fancy Aston Villa will get the vote there for the referee against Simon Stainrod. Oh, Fennick came out looking for an offside and Wick stayed back, enabling Gary Shaw to get possession, to whiff, to Shaw, good effort! Oh, it just straight past that far post from Gary Shaw. The offside game didn't work there. Fennick came racing out looking for a flag and Wick stayed back. An interchange between Shaw and With, and a lovely shot, which on another day might well have gone in. Waddock. McMahon and Kirbishley trying to get things going in midfield for Aston Villa. DC lending a hand from left back. Rangers diving in with the tackle. Still DC and Shaw. And DC again. Now McMahon. And Shaw is through. Good turn. Was he fouled? Penalty. Terry Fennick on Gary Shaw. And the protest by Terry Fennick is to no avail. It's a penalty to Aston Villa. Good build up again by Villa, and when Shaw got in there, he tried to turn inside Fennick, who blocked him. Penalty given, from my angle, a good decision. Alan Evans to take the kick. The Villa captain. And scores! 
scores. 1-1. Evans the scorer, but Gary Shaw on his return to the Aston Villa league side has an impact just when it was required. It's 20 minutes from the end that Aston Villa draw level. And Alan Evans, actually, that was his fourth successful penalty of the season and his eighth goal overall. He's Villa's second high scorer, would you believe, from centre-back. And he's taken over the penalty job, Alan Evans, largely because Gordon Cowns has been out of action for so long, the original penalty taker. The attendance this afternoon at Villa Park, just under 20,000, but the loyalists at the Holt end there, hoping to see their team recover from what was, after all, a fairly indifferent Christmas. Villa were beaten at Watford and drew here against Spurs. Now they're level again against Queen's Park Rangers. End singing and why not? A mistake initially in defence. Neil now losing his head. He's already been booked. He's had a go at Walters. He's kicked the ball away. He's being warned by the linesman. The referee here has got to decide whether to leave Warren Neil on the field. Walters was the player he tangled with. Linesman's given his verdict to the referee, who has to decide, does he send Neil off? Only a few minutes left, a lecture. Are we going to play the game the right way or not? We are. Good decision by the referee, sensible stuff from Alan Banks. with McMahon's goal has lit up the afternoon beautifully taken Ormes with acrobatic clearance A rousing second half here brought Aston Villa their first win of the holiday period and Steve McMahon said farewell to 1983 with a memorable winning goal. Jeremy Charles had put Queen's Park Rangers ahead after 54 minutes but Aston Villa clawed their way back into the match. Alan Evans equalising from the penalty spot applauds the fans and in the end Villa were good value for the three points. Well, it could equally be said that Queen's Park Rangers were unlucky to come away with nothing, although I've no complaints about the penalty decision that brought Villa back into the game. What took my eye was the determination of Eamon DC, number three there, uh, winning the ball back for Villa with a courageous and correct tackle. But more than that, unlike so many players these days, he declined several legitimate opportunities to fall and claim a foul, and battled on persistently to keep Rangers defenders under pressure. Shaw loses control of his layoff but DC's awareness enables him to pounce first and keep the move going. 
It's McMahon who carries on the good work with a precisely weighted through ball to shore, and the slow motion finally enables us to see the correctness of referee Alan Banks' penalty award. Some might have hidden behind obstruction, but in my view, they'd have been wrong. Well, on now to our second match between...